So, when you think about Star Wars games, all the greats come to mind, like Knights of the Old Republic, TIE Fighter, Dark Forces and Jedi Knight, the Super Star Wars games. What you probably don't think about is Star Wars Chess for the Sega CD. Now, this is kind of an interesting one to talk about, because it's a chess video game, and who's really into that? But chess has been around for about a thousand years, and it hasn't really changed much. So, whenever you put a unique spin on it, it's a good way to get noticed, especially when you wrap it in one of the most beloved franchises of all time. Star Wars Chess, or if you stick to the title screen, the software Toolworks Star Wars Chess, was developed by, appropriately enough, the software Toolworks and released for the Sega CD in 1993. In a game that should have no story, the story is that the Galactic Empire and Rebel Alliance are now using the ancient game of chess to solve their conflict, which is way too much effort to explain the concept, but still does not explain why they are now two Chewbaccas existing simultaneously. The game is pretty much what you'd imagine, with popular Star Wars characters taking the places of traditional chess pieces, including Darth Vader hilariously playing the Queen on the Imperial side. Some of the other choices are a bit more confusing, like why the Tusken Raider is fighting for the Empire. If I can put on my nerd glasses for a second, the Galactic Empire is known to be pretty fiercely racist, and the Tusken Raiders are nomadic savages confined to a single dustball planet in the Outer Rim, so I'm really not sure what common ground they'd share, but I digress. There's another rather large oversight, and I'll let you see if you can spot it. Just tell me what's wrong here. Yep, that's right. Han Solo is nowhere to be found. Simply inexcusable. Anyway, what makes this game unique aside from the nonsense fiction surrounding the iconic characters playing chess is the battle animations. While chess pieces coming to life and killing each other isn't a new idea, and it had already been done before even in the early 90s, the animations in the game are wacky, if not a little disturbing. Most come off as comical, like Boba Fett backhanding C-3PO so hard his head spins off, but others are surprisingly violent, even if they're presented as a joke. You can go ahead and turn the animations off, but then why would you bother playing Star Wars chess in the first place? Now, I bought this game when I saw it at a local shop, even though I didn't have a Sega CD at the time, mostly because I remember seeing it in magazines when I was a kid and I was dying to play it. But overall, I think it was really just the Star Wars fan in me that had to have it. And I know that it's kind of the cool thing now to show your apathy for Star Wars and that it's lost a lot of its luster for a lot of people, but I still love it. And I mean, the prequels weren't fantastic, but I mean, I still thought they were okay, so I can't fight that war with you guys. But I still remember how Star Wars used to feel, and this game is a good reminder of that. It's not all binary sunsets and rainbows, though. The game does have its flaws. The controls are surprisingly clunky, and moving your cursor sometimes feels like a chore because there's a split-second delay in pressing the D-pad when it actually moves on screen. On top of that, the game's isometric view makes it pretty difficult to see exactly which square the pieces are on and where you're moving, although pressing the B button brings up a screen showing the board with traditional pieces so you can get a little bit of a better idea where everything is. My main gripe might just be because I'm terrible at chess, but even on the easier difficulties, the game is pretty tough. If you're good at chess, you probably won't have any issues, but man, I can't win a game to save my life. It's still fun to play, though, because the animations are fun to watch. They have that early 90s PC game charm to them, and I still get a kick out of them. The load times aren't bad either, and they don't really slow down the game, which is good since chess is already pretty slow. Now, Star Wars Chess is kind of a weird recommendation. If you're a Star Wars fan, it's a neat collectible, even if you don't wind up playing it all that often. The current going rate is about $20, but I found it at a local shop for 11 so keep an eye out for a good deal. If you don't like Star Wars or chess, then there's really not a whole lot for you here, and I'm kind of surprised that you're still watching this long, so thanks for that. You're a trooper. Star Wars Chess is a neat little game that's definitely the most niche title I've talked about so far. It's got its problems, sure, but overall it's a great piece of Star Wars memorabilia and a good way to kill some time if you like chess but don't have anyone nearby to play with. It's definitely worth a look if you can find it cheap enough. Now you will know the power of the dark side.